I know a gentleman that's going to be a big part of an upcoming card is this, this man. What was that, Macho Man Randy Savage? It happened so fast you can't even talk about it. Lucky person, yeah, out there somewhere is going to win a silver cloud. What a lucky, lucky, lucky person. And Tito Santana, if you go to the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship out with the Macho Man Randy Savage and escape with your life and still lose your belt. You are a lucky, lucky, lucky Tito. Yeah, that's what they're going to be calling you. Because comparatively speaking to the Macho Man Randy Savage, you are nothing but garbage, yeah. Nothing but garbage, Gaina. And I'm talking inevitable, and I'm talking you can't hold that belt with me climbing through the ropes. Gene Okerling right here is a crying towel. And I want you to give that to Tito Santana. Yeah, because things are just popping right now. Things are starting to cultivate. Things are starting to grow. Uh, uh, things are getting real colorful. Oh, look at that roll. Just like the silver cloud Rolls Royce. I, I'm very Top curious. Top of the line. Wait a minute. Randy, Tito Randy. Santana, comparatively speaking, you are like a grain of sand in the Sahara Desert. Yeah. And I am the entire desert. And the new intercontinental heavyweight champion, Dunk. Bet against me. I don't, don't bet anyway. Don't lose your life, no. Don't what about change Elizabeth? your life. Elizabeth is icing the champagne right now because the time is getting near and the Guyana must face the match of the century. Yes. Champagne? Champagne. What, what kind? Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters, no. Nothing matters but the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship belt, which I will own. Oh, yeah, Tito Santana, climb in the garbage can, because comparatively speaking, you are nothing but garbage. We had, we had, we had a whole lot of superstars on this stage here tonight. But I want y'all to know one thing. This is And when I say who's a vote attack skills and vocabulary, too. I've been hitting the distance. All brand new, you're through. I'm at the planetary and like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef, no relief. I step on stage, girls scream like I'm Keith. Well, we missed y'all last week, so I had to make sure I get this show in this week. Uh, Ringtime Pro Wrestling is at it again. Uh, Keith is riding solo this morning. Uh, it is after the WWE draft. Um, it's a lot to talk about It's a lot to cover Because I'm going to jam in About a week and a half of wrestling For you to all consume And get you guys caught up uh, This is a very busy time In the wrestling calendar apparently uh, You got the Cruiserweight Tournament Has kicked off uh, New Japan G1 Climax has kicked off uh, The Super J Tournament Is going down uh, Smackdown Live premiered last night so we got Battleground coming up Sunday It is a great time to be a wrestler fan Now the problem is How many hours of wrestling can you watch Cause man you only got a week To get it all in And you still gotta go to work There's still other television to watch What are you gonna do I don't know So without further ado Let me get into what's been going down Get you guys caught up uh, I'm going to bring it back I'm going to dial back to the calendar to last week And Basically we're going to start from the Cruiserweight Classic um, Basically what the WWE did Is they broke down the opening round So um, We get four matches from the first round Not really in order Even in the order I mean order they were recorded uh, We're going to pull four matches on Wednesday And we're going to watch those And I think that's how we're going to stretch it out Throughout the rest of the tournament um, I thought they did a good job Showcasing the first few matches To get you warmed up for the tournament um, The Grand Metallic Versus Alejandro says Big showcase for Metallic man. Big showcase I for one wasn't really familiar with him I knew he wrestled in uh, Mexico I knew he probably wrestled in CMLL Hey, what a showcase! That dude has moves for days. Um, same thing with Ho Ho Lund. He took on Davari. Um, hey, I didn't know the Chinese wrestling scene was so in its infancy. 
And they are really trying to grow it And there wasn't a lot of Chinese promotions to begin with And like that's one of the things that they're kicking off And the WWE of course with their Asian expansion And trying to move big I mean you gotta think about it They just signed a guy to a developmental deal in NXT They have the Japanese contingent in NXT already When you got Nakamura You got Atami You got Asuka I mean, these guys are really going hard to secure that Asian market. And I think they're doing a good job. They're going to be the number one American company in Asia, which is wide open right now, right? Because I'm going to say the number one American company because I always feel like New Japan is going to be the number one company over there simply because they run so many shows, they have so much content, and they're homegrown, right? People always are going to Go with their homegrown thing And those talents over there Are people that were born there mostly So you're going to naturally gravitate um, I thought the whole match Was very good against Davari. Uh The Cedric Alexander match Gutsy win for Cedric Alexander um, He left ROH For the purpose of being in this tournament uh, I think this guy's going to have a big future to WWE uh, And understand That word on the street Just to let you know The Cruiserweights will be exclusive to Raw So That's going to be a huge platform For a lot of these guys This tournament is basically To introduce you to them And it's not really I wouldn't peg too much On winners or losers just who gets the shine in the tournament Even though the winner and the loser are very important Okay um, Sergio Alexander Is a guy I think they're banking on To have a big future uh, Same thing with Metallic Ho Ho Lun I, We'll see um, Davari is back Because they need experience And they need guys they trust So you know A lot of companies do this um, you see it in all kinds of sports hey Amen People are very good with folks that they know They got their number in the phone They know these guys will work So they called up Davari um, Cedric Alexander I'm sure they watched a lot of ROH And I think they feel really good Taking a guy from ROH right now Just because that relationship Isn't what it used to be So good with that um, Match of the night Koto Abushi versus Sean Maluda. Um, Abushi is probably one of the favorites to win this tournament. Up there with Zach Sabri. Um, and I would say maybe Metallic is up in that mix. But Abushi, man. Him and Maluda having a match together in the first round, I wasn't really sure about. Um, Maluda, they did a good job telling his story. He is a part of. The Samoan Dynasty. He is um, Alpha's nephew, so of course that puts him in line with Roman Reigns, the Usos, and you know that great legacy of Alpha Sika and the great Chief Peter Maivia. And I mean, like you go down the line, right? The Rock, um, hell, Nia Jax is in that mix now. Tamina is part of that mix. I mean, we could keep going through it. Uh, I thought it was a great showcase for Baluda. Um, at first, I kind of would liked him to have a different draw, but once again, in wrestling, sometimes it's not about winning and losing; it's about the showcase. And I thought the showcase was great for Baluda. Uh, Abushi doesn't disappoint, and he pulls out the win. But you are in doubt. You are like, whoa! Could this be the biggest upset of the tournament in the very first round? And I think they wanted that tension In the first round like Especially on the first show Because you got to come back And you can't have a bunch of matches That are foregone, foregone conclusions Especially in a 32 man tournament So To keep people coming back I, I very fully understand Why that match Had to happen You had to excuse me I had to stop my alarm from going off Because I usually wake up about this time But hey I am up a recording for you guys. Um, 
with that being said, we're moving on to Raw. Um, like it's the Cruiserweight Classic. It's going to be excellent. Um, so let's talk about Raw. The Raw before the draft. The final Raw before WWE Battleground. What's going to happen? Who's going to do what? Well, we open up the show and we find out what. See, Stephanie and Shane are the commissioners, but they're not the general managers. And apparently they need general managers to run their shows. Um, and they brought on some heavy hitters for general manager. Uh, Stephanie for Raw will have Mick Foley as her general manager. And Shane, in a surprise, brought out Daniel Bryan, who currently is commentating on the Cruiserweight Classic, but now will be the general manager of SmackDown Live. I think this is huge. Uh, for a ratings boost, Daniel Bryan back on TV is really going to help. The crowd still loves him. They still believe in the Yes movement. That has a lot of currency. That can be used a few different ways. I mean, don't be surprised if there's a heel turn down the line for the Yes movement. Uh, don't be surprised. Um, you know, if they just ride it, try to get people over. Because his co side is going to be the line. Uh, Daniel Bryan has a special connection with the fans and the WWE is smart enough to capitalize on it and I think with Daniel he's ready to be back in the fold right like I think it was a matter of time him coming back and having a job and doing something with the WWE but it was when he was ready because you got to remember him leaving because of his concussions probably was the hardest thing he ever had to do he had to give up the one thing he loved once he got to the top of it you know what I mean? Like, this is like LeBron James having to retire now after winning the title at Cleveland. That's what it is. Like, he reached the pinnacle of what it is in that sport. The ultimate underdog story reaches the top and then has to quit. Not for anything that he did on his own, but just because of the beating he took to get there. I, I think it's something that resonates with fans. I think it's easy for them to connect with. But... That had to be really, really hard for him to walk away from. So now he's back and he is ready to wrestle again. Well, not wrestle again, but be a part of wrestling. Okay. Oh, I went raw. I thought the show was interested. Uh, I thought Stephanie and Brian State backstage banter was a little. Okay. Uh, Dale get back into the groove of things. Um, I thought it was a solid match with. Cesaro, Sami Zayn versus Jericho and Kevin Owens. And it's kind of funny because like you're watching these matches on Raw and you realize some of these matches may not reduplicate themselves again. Like this last Raw is almost like a super show because a lot of these guys aren't going to see each other for a long time. And it it turned out pretty decent. I mean, we, we got a lot of heavy hitters facing off with each other. We also got a world title match, which was crazy. Like, how do you get a world title match on Raw? But then again, hey, did we get a world title match on SmackDown the next night? But there's more on that later. More highlights from Raw. We it had to show that had a huge, huge uh, twelve man tag match uh, with the Club and the Wyatts taking on Cena, Enzo, and Cass, and the New Day. I mean, man, that's twelve big guys in the ring there. That's twelve guys worth seeing. And they put them in one match. I said, so about when you talk about loading up a show, Raw wasn't scared this week. Um, and the match actually didn't disappoint. There was a lot of action. Uh, the promos before the match were pretty solid. Um, a lot of one lighters, a lot of good mic work back and forth between the different guys. So I was thoroughly entertained. Uh, I don't know what to say if you wasn't. I'm just saying I was entertained. I'm also impressed by Xavier Woods being a level 21 Pokemon trainer. As a guy who's only a level 7 right now, I really appreciate the hard work and dedication it must took to become a level 21 Pokemon trainer. Even though traveling all over the country, I bet it's really easy to grab a bunch of new different kind of Pokemon. But you know what I'm saying? Neither here nor there. Good job, Xavier Woods. I got a lot of work to do. Um, also, if you are offering tips on how to train Pokemon, I am available at kholt at ringtimeprowrestling.com. Drop me an email. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, also, uh, Darren Young is getting a good push. You got to think last week he wins the number one contender battle royal. 
Uh, this week he gets distracted by Miz, but still pulls off a win, beating Alberto Del Rio. Uh, hey Amen. This guy is on his way. Hopefully WWE is using this push to get uh, this guy, you know, a good platform. Uh, I think working with Bob Backlund and those vignettes have really helped him get over with the fans and people understand that he's a talent and they're finally going to really try to utilize him. Um, it's good to see him and Titus both getting their shine as individuals. Um, another guy who seems to be getting a good rub is Zack Ryder. And we find out he's going to have a match against Rusev for the U.S. title on Sunday. So, you know, hopefully these guys are getting put in position. And like I said, when you got a new show coming and you're splitting up the brands, you're going to have to elevate some people. Because your mid card is going to have to be solid. And I think they reward two guys who've been in the system a while and worked hard. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to fast forward to the main event of Raw because we got a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Uh, so we had Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins who gave you a thrilling match that was watched by both commissioners and new general managers because you got a scout because, hey, man, a draft coming up, right? Who are you going to make the franchise? So... These guys going at it, and uh, it turned in a pretty good match for a world title, and it was left in doubt. And hey, and initially Seth Rollins was crowned the winner, but we found out we didn't have a winner, and it was a double pin, and the ref ruled it as a double pin, and Dean retained the title. He had to go physically get it back from Seth. We had a scrum, and one of the smarter things I think they did, they went to the overrun, but then they allowed the overrun to go to the WWE Network. I think this is something that they need to keep in their back pocket and maybe they can utilize with both shows. Now, here's the problem with the WWE. They get a good idea and they kill it and they run it in the ground, run it in the ground, run it in the ground. But one thing about the WWE Network is their logons. And with logons, you know who's actually tuned in, right? Like network television and the network uh, ratings model is kind of old, and we don't necessarily know who is watching and when and all that. But you know who's turning in and logging on, right? If you're getting millions of logons for that overrun, I think you know there's a good thing going. Also, hey, what more would encourage people to sign up for the network than, hey, this thing might go over and I won't know the result. Because I think one thing that hurts the network is Raw and SmackDown isn't on the network per se. But I think the fact if they had something that would attract you to the network related to Raw and SmackDown besides the pre-show, I think they would be in good shape. All right. Usually this is where we take our break, but we're going to do a little bit different today because like I said, we got a lot going on. Uh, birthday segment. We are going to talk about birthdays. Uh, Adam Rose will be celebrating his birthday today. Adam Rose will turn 36. Um... There will be no more birthdays until Friday. Friday, David Von Erich would have been 58. Uh, Shawn Michaels celebrates his birthday. He will turn 51. HBK, wow. Fandango on Friday. All three of these birthdays are on Friday, the 22nd, mind you. Um, Fandango turns 35. Um, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. And uh, that... Uh, Adam Rose would have been starting at 37. But Fandango was going to turn 35. Um, Sunday on the pay per view day, uh, Tori Wilson celebrates a birthday. You realize Tori Wilson is going to be 41? Wow, didn't know that. And Angelo Dawkins um, is going to turn 26. Yes, people who were born in 1990 will turn 26. Just to make you feel old, some of you. Because some of y'all graduated in 1990. Uh, so let's get on to the news. So I got like two weeks of news and notes, and that is crazy. Um, but let's go over the big stuff. Uh, John Cena hosted the S at ESPYS last week. Uh, did a really good job. I thought his monologue was pretty solid, and he represented the company really well. And WWE was winning. So last week on Wednesday, they had the Cruiserweight Classic, they had NXT show, and they had John Cena hosted the ESPYS. So if you wasn't watching one thing, you was watching the other, right? Uh, also at the ESPYs, Big Show ran into Shaq and challenged him to a WrestleMania match. Now, this is something they've teased for years and years. But Shaq is good and retired from the NBA. 
he's still young enough. Uh, show, you know, get towards the end of his career, and I think this needs to happen. Even though I think Show should win, and the reason I say Show, Show always comes out on the bad end of these celebrity matches and these kind of things. Remember, he lost to Floyd Mayweather. Now it was due to the help of sixteen bodyguards, but still he lost the match to Floyd Mayweather, and I just don't think that was cool. But I get it, right? But this one against Shaq would be interested. Uh, Shaq next to Big Show. Like I realize how big Big Show is. And then it really makes me appreciate how huge Shaq is, man. Wow. Um, I'm not sure what kind of ring shape Shaq could get into. Or, you know, how, you know, it'd be a gimmick match. And it won't be like a five-star classic. But, hey, man, it'd be an attraction worth seeing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm down for this. Um, Moose joins TNA and attacks Bobby Lashley when he comes in. Now... For you guys who are unfamiliar with Moose, he is a up and coming star that was at Ring of Honor. Um, former NFL football player, played for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I think this is a big coup for TNA. This is a young up and coming talent that a lot of people had their eyes on. I'm sure the WWE had their eyes on him. I mean, just size alone, he's, he's a WWE size fit. But TNA got him, and TNA locked some guys under, that, under, good, under good deals. And. Uh, I think this is a good time for them to maximize set some new blood and go into a new direction for the company. Um, also in the news last week, the WWE has been estimated worth $3.4 billion based on a the recent sale of the UFC. Because if you understand, the UFC sold for $4 billion. Now, people f- kind of see them as similar, but there are... Some very differences in their models, right? The UFC still uses the traditional pay per view model, and I mean, most of their content is pay per view. Even though they do have contacts contracts with Fox Sports, and they do work with ESPN a lot, and they do do a lot of shows, you know, on network television because Fox Sports One and Fox do broadcast uh, UFC cards. But I don't know what their TV contracts are like with Fox. WWE is primarily a television business nowadays. Their big deal is their contracts with NBC Universal. But the WWE Network is a very good version of member of income now. Because you got to think, being over 1 million subscribers, $10 a subscription, you do the simple math, that's $10 million a month in revenue, right? And that has nothing to do with You selling out arenas for Raw, selling out arenas for SmackDown, selling out arenas for your pay-per-views, right? So that's other revenue coming in. Like, I I can see how that model works. And I mean, when you're dealing with a lot of human capital, um, the the main thing you have to do is pay the wrestlers. Even though the WWE production values are very costly, but I think they still clear a good amount of cash and that's one thing about them they're a heavy cash business too so they have a lot of money in the bank so yeah i can see how that valuation goes up and with their international expansion their stock price right now is kind of undervalued like it it may shoot up to almost 40 dollars a share sooner than later just because based on what happened with the ufc now wwe is a publicly traded entity but i think people Seeing that UFC sell for four billion, have a, another view of the WWE and probably are looking at it as a more serious business. It only takes one person to legitimize things, and with that company buying the UFC for four billion, they're saying, "Hey, you should get in this type of business." So, good for them. Um, this week's news. Hey, man. 1980s wrestlers out here suing the WWE over concussion issues. Um, they will have a hard time getting that money. Now, who are your favorite wrestlers on this list? Man, Axis Mash from Demolition are suing. Hall of Famers, Animal of the Road Warriors are suing. Jimmy Superfly Snooker is suing. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff is suing. They are saying the company is responsible for neurological injuries they suffered during participating in wrestling matches. Here is going to be their big problem. 
a lot of people like to go after the WWE for this kind of thing. And this is where the NFL would I think would be smart making their case too in the situation. Well, here's the one thing with WWE. They didn't start studying neurological data to years ago, like re- very recently. So to have them negligent is they didn't even have the information. So you can't really call them negligent in that sense. Also, um, the concussions and the chair shots and a lot of that stuff are kind of a 90s advent. So if you wrestled in the 80s, you probably didn't take a lot of those. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's still opportunities for concussions. And you probably got kicked in the head and there's some other things. But it was a, I think wrestling got a lot more extreme in the 90s. And the head contact and the physical things that happen with the head. I don't know if you could blame that on some of the things that happen. Now, did they push guys too far? Yes. But what they will say in court is that these guys had opportunity to make a decision. They made the decision to go out and still perform. And it is what it is. And like somebody like with, with Royal Warrior Animal, I, I don't see how he... Here's the thing. What I would present with WWE, his case is like, hey, man, this guy worked here, but of his like 30-year career... He might have a grand total of six years here. How do those concussions came in the AWA? How do those concussions come the bulk of his career, which was spent at NWA and Crockett promotions, right? Well, then later WCW, which is all still the same territory. Um, hell, they worked in Mid-South. They worked everywhere. I don't know if those concussions came in Japan. I You can't take responsibility for all those concussions. Mr. Waterfall, same thing. Snooker, same thing. Territory star. Who blew up in the WWE. I can't be responsible for that. So, I, I think they're going to have a really hard time with this lawsuit. And it's amazing that some of these guys who probably have ledger deals and get checks for the WWE have jumped on this lawsuit. But these aren't the only names in the lawsuit. Like, I will go down some names that are on this lawsuit. James Sugar Bear Harris Kamala is on the lawsuit. Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Sr. are both on the lawsuit. So don't expect Chavo to be in the WWE anytime soon. Both the Hebner brothers, the referees are suing. And they saw it like they saw it based on that the WWE had knowledge of CTE and that they concealed it. Like I said, I uh, I mean I would put it past them, but it's hard to admit that they do. I mean the NFL didn't really get a lot till Dr. Abalu, who discovered it. Picked up uh, Mike Webster's brain So I mean how long Did WWE have it How You gotta think about like when did the Whiskey Institute Start like that had to be in the mid 2000s Like right So that's when you know When the whiskey started going to his thing So that's about 2006 Maybe 2005 So That's one of those things I mean Now don't get me wrong I think these wrestlers may have Had some serious concussion Issues the thing is, like I said, the WWE taking the whole blame. Uh, strong man Kim Patera is in this mix with this lawsuit. Um, jumping Jim Bronzel is in the lawsuit. I still can't get over the Hebners. The referees? The referees is in the lawsuit? Hey, maybe they suing because of that plant surgery the Bill and Diamond Man had him get. Butch Reed is in the lawsuit. Uh, Jazz is in the lawsuit. Uh, the Godwins Muhammad Hassan is in the lawsuit How long did Muhammad Hassan wrestle in WWE? A year? Uh, Shane Douglas in the lawsuit Same thing I don't think Shane Douglas did a lot of time in the WWE um, The representatives for uh, Axel Rotten's family and his estate uh, Just like with uh, Snooker his, 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 been, his representative is his wife um, I mean it's it's a pretty detailed thing too Marty Jannetty is in on the lawsuit Now I know he's had bad things to say about the WWE And Triple H and Stephanie And they tried You know he, he's been pretty out there um, probably, Shawn Michaels probably don't return his phone calls no more I mean shit oof. Damn Jannetty But let's see Jesse Barr is on the lawsuit Slick is on the lawsuit Slick He got a concussion manager people how slick get it on a lawsuit? The one bad gang is on a lawsuit. This is crazy. Or is he representing the one bad gang as his manager in a lawsuit? I don't know. Tracy Smothers is in on the lawsuit. The 
the warlord and the barbarian are in on the lawsuit. This is a, this is kind of crazy. Um, I put a link on Ringtime Pro Wrestling Facebook page to like the actual lawsuit, the official lawsuit documents. It's a PDF. It's like 214 pages. I can't read it all, but I put it up there for you guys to have if you want to check it out. Uh, I think I did also the Ringtime Pro Wrestling Twitter account. But yeah, this is gonna be crazy. And I guess some law firm that got these guys gassed up. Like, I think that's what happened with the NFL. I think there's some lawyers who got these guys, got in their ear, and taking their money, and they're going to go in here and try to fight Vince McMahon, a billionaire, right? Well, a lot of you guys probably got a few hundred grand left in the bank. I don't know how long this going to last. I mean, that's a few of y'all. A few of y'all still doing indie shows, taking chair shots and for $20. Because y'all have ran through a lot of y'all wrestling buddy So we'll see how that ends I really wouldn't want no parts Of this lawsuit um, Sid Cara And Simon Gotch are rumored to have A backstage fight at Smackdown Live Ooh uh, Don't really know how it happened But it said went down to catering um, I can't stand the wall villain, So I really don't know Hey Sid Car, not to do the best with This is not the original Sid Cara This is Hudico who Hey, last I heard, he gave them things to Sheamus with somebody who came when he came around with that disrespect. Not do you want to mess with. Um, if you have been under a rock, Brock Lesnar had tested positive for a bad substance in his uh, UFC match against prior to his UFC match against Mark Hunt. Well, you Sada did a second test. They ran a second sample because hey, when you run the first one, you got to do a second, and that one came back dirty too. So, uh, it's a real particular thing. WWE reported on their website when it happened. Like, they didn't run away from it. But it's kind of like, ooh. Did you just suspend Roman Reigns for taking a bad substance? Now you got Brock Lesnar who tests positive? Ooh, y'all going to be in a sticky situation. Now, um, the New York State Athletic Commission actually weighs in on Brock's status for SummerSlam. Because technically, they probably don't want him competing at SummerSlam. Uh, he was pulled. He was supposed to be at SmackDown Live. But uh, they pulled him off that show. So, hey, man, this is going to be kind of interesting. Because, like I said, uh, this is a second positive test. So, what do they do for the Randy Orton match at SummerSlam? Um, ugh, that's tight. Like I said, as a company, you can't have him out there. First of all, this invalidates his UFC win, which sucks because Brock looked great, man. But and I was talking about how good he looked, but whew, now I see why he looked so good. Ah, that's why he was cut. He was taking some. But uh, the New York State Athletic Commission released a statement, and they said uh, whether or not they can officially prevent Brock Lesnar from competing at SummerSlam. Uh, in 2002, New York State passed legislation scaled back the regulation of professional wrestling. In many respects, based on the recognition that the activity is entertainment rather than a bona fide athletic competition, under current New York State law, professional wrestling is defined as wrestling primarily for the purpose of providing entertainment to spectators, which is not compromise a bona fide athletic contest or competitions. I quote, as such, the New York State does not license individual wrestlers and Mr. Lesnar is not a license of the New York State Athletic Commission in context of professional wrestling as defined above the state licenses only the promoter such as the WWE per New York State law among other health and safety requirements apply to licensing of the promoter the event promoter is required to have a physician examine each wrestler and determine whether each wrestler is medically fit to participate uh, so the question is whether Mr. Lesnar is fit to participate as a professional wrestling event and one will determine by the application of the professional medical judgment of the examining physician. The policies of the WWE and the choices by Mr. Lesnar with regard to his own participation leading up to the event's date. So basically New York State Athletic Commission is saying you can't use us as a scapegoat. This one is on you. Y'all got to be big boys and make your own decision. Ah. Uh, I'd have to keep Brock. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you let it go. Because WWE fans really don't care about steroids. I'm going to say it. And a lot of y'all probably listening like, 
No, that's bull. I care about steroids. I want those guys to be healthy. Man, look, you can't sit there and watch this stuff over the course of the years and pretend that you really care or you think everybody clean. I ain't calling out no names. I'm just saying, uh, you know, WWE drug tests are random. And I'm pretty sure some people end up not getting randomly selected to pee in those cups. So, you know, with that being there, I said, WWE is in a pickle on this one But uh, with that We're going to take our break We'll come back I'll recap the Smackdown I'll go to the high points of the draft And we will give you the official preview Of WWE Battleground Alright ladies and gentlemen We got a taste of it a little earlier on Here on Saturday night's main event When the madness Met the mania I am talking about Macho Madness and Hulkamania, two mega powers beating here tonight. Hulk Hogan, what is happening? Well, you know me, Gene, we really don't know what we're dealing with here, man. And I'm just kind of a little worried about walking up here. So because right. we just might blow the whole planet up, you know. Everybody knows that Hulkamania is the strongest force in this universe. But when I hit that ring and I saw what the madness was all about, I realized there was a whole nother universe out there, a whole nother frontier, and the power of the madness and the mania just blew my 24-inch guns out, man. You mean to tell me there is another solar system, Macho oh, Man? Unbelievable. I'm still in a state of shock right now. For a long period of time. Yeah, reckless abandon is what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, he endorsed Macho Man, this and he gave me direction. Yeah. Direction now, with the mega, yeah, the mega, yeah, the mega power, yeah. Mega power, yeah. I feel the power now. I feel the power right there. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. The head over the head, Macho Man. Oh, oh man, I'm all right. It's never been better. Yeah, don't you worry about the head over the head, man. I'm just worried about where we're going from here. Is it this stratosphere, man? Is it the ionosphere with the madness and the mania as one guiding force? We could go ahead and take the whole. I cannot believe this. No, all the the here on Saturday night. Event, Ooh, the Mega man, Powers, power the Madness, Macho Man the Randy Savage, yeah. and the Heavyweight Champion, and Hulkamania. Welcome back, everybody. So let's get it rocking and rolling. Uh, we watched SmackDown live. We haven't had a live SmackDown in forever and a day. Uh, SmackDown will continue to be live from now on. It won't be just a special event because guess what? Those partners at USA said they want some first run Starfire programming, and the best way to get it is live because people ain't gonna want to miss it. And guess what? Wrestling podcast. We got to step our game up because we're going to have to record. And guess what? It's a brand extension. You got two separate rosters going. So you know what that means? You got to watch SmackDown. Or as my friends at the WrestleCast say, SmackDown matters. And yep, it does right now. It matters a lot. Um, so let's go with the draft. What's well, well, part of what's going on? So let's kick off the, the draft and then we'll go. Into the matches that happened also on SmackDown, right? So, with the first pick of the draft, because that's how we kicked off the show, uh, Raw took Seth Rollins. Gotta love Seth. Uh, very talented young man. And yes, if I was starting the company, that's the first pick I would take too. Uh, SmackDown with Dean Ambrose. So, this is it for them, right? Whatever happens at this match, this is it for them too. They're going their separate ways. So it makes it very much more climactic Sunday that those two are going their separate ways. You almost wish for that was to be a one on one match. Especially considering the fact that these two had two really good matches this week. This could be the finality of it. Now, I'll go to how it all ends up. But yeah. So we got that. Uh, 
The third pick was Charlotte for Raw. Uh, SmackDown with AJ Styles. And uh, Raw went with the new blood. Mind you, this is the rules of the draft. There have been six picks from NXT. Raw takes the first one with Finn Balor. Raw gets three picks each round. SmackDown gets two. Reason being, Raw has three hours. SmackDown has two. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going with Finn Balor. Now, with Finn on Raw and AJ on SmackDown, it kind of put the club in play. Because which way they're going to go. Because now, you're going to pair them up with one of those guys. And those guys being on separate brands tell me that they're going to be, you know, separate entities. Um, so we go. That's the end of the first round. Um, we kind of get rocking and rolling. Uh, John Cena takes on Luke Gallows. Cena wins. Uh, both camps show up to the match. Uh, Enzo and Cass make up for that miscommunication that they had with Cena on Monday. And Cena gets the big win. Uh, we go into the second round of the draft. Raw kicks it off with Roman Reigns. Makes sense. Roman Reigns seems like a Raw guy. Now, SmackDown follows up and picks John Cena. Very huge. And there's two things I know about these two picks. One, Roman and Seth are going to continue having an issue. Right? I would almost bet this might mean Seth wins the title on Sunday. Roman and Seth are going to have an issue. Uh, Cena... This might be Cena scaling back. Cena going to SmackDown to me signifies that maybe Cena is taking a step back from the whole scene. You got to think, he's been in like two movies in the last year. He's hosting the ESPYs. He hosted his own reality show. Like, Cena is doing a lot outside the WWE. And he's not doing movies on WWE Network either. Like, he's doing films with other people. So, I've... I don't know what this necessarily means for him, but I think this might mean the career is winding down. Now, do I think he gets another title reign? Yes. Before it's all over, he goes. He gonna get one more last ride to glory. Uh, he's going to hit sixteen. Does he do seventeen? I don't know. Um, but I think he does hit sixteen, unless they want to protect Flair's title reign. But. Vince likes to do things WWE style, right? So, if Vince can have one of his guys win the belt and then go 16, and it's a his whole grown guy who's never wrestled anywhere else have the record, that could mean a lot to Vince. Uh, mind you, Triple H, who all his world title reigns are WWE, is probably number three on the list with 14, right? Because we're going with recognized title raids by Pro Wrestling Illustrated and all the other various wrestling media publications who deem what world titles are relevant in county world championships. Now, WWE cheated for a while with the brand extension because they had two world champions, but everybody still recognized those individual champions. So, once again, Cedar Triple H, both are up there. Um... Like I said, who do Triple H was going to get uh, title rate 14? So, it could be very possible that Cena does break the flare record. Or at least ties it. Uh, Brock Lesnar is going to Raw. Which is an interesting pick, but I get it. Because here's the thing. Raw is still your flagship show. It's still your big money show. So, when he comes back on his limited basis, he's coming back to the big money. He's going to be at Raw. Randy Orton goes to SmackDown. Kind of interested. What, what, what I got, what I gleaned from that too, is that this SmackDown decided to go with experience. Like if you look at the, the first three picks, it's Ambrose, Styles. Ambrose is the young gun of this. Cena, then Orton. Orton is the part of that 2002 class with Cena. So you got guys who are seasoned. Uh, Orton is a 12 time champion And I think they'll be able to work with the younger talent uh, Raw would kind of more of a youth movement um, Then we go Well I'll, go, I'll come back at the next round um, We have uh, Zack Ryder and Darren Young They defeat uh, The Miz and Rusev um, 
Zach and Darren are both on rolls, man. Those guys are on a roll. They are headed to the top. Well, they're gonna say headed to the top, but they are they are firmly positioned. One of them are gonna walk away with a title this week at the pay per view. Somebody is leaving with a title. I don't know if both of them will win, but somebody's gonna leave with a title at the pay per view. Um, Xavier Woods defeated Bray Wyatt. Uh, Wyatt gets a you know one on one matchup here. Uh, we find that Wyatt still has a little bit of mind control over Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods has a hard time snapping out of it. But uh, this match will be interesting on Sunday with between the two, two camps. Uh, Kevin Owens supposed to have a match. Sami Zayn interrupted. And uh, next thing you know, Atlanta Kane decided he needs to choke slam everybody. And back to the draft where, hey, the New Day are picks from Raw. Well, you know what? The New Day was probably in the last round, so I, I messed that up. So the New Day is at Raw, so Raw will retain the Tag Team Champions. Don't you dare be sour, because SmackDown is probably going to have a Tag Team Tournament. Uh, Sami Zayn is a pick for Raw. Uh, SmackDown goes with Bray Wyatt. Which the Okay, so Tag Teams will be selected as a group. Unless somebody wants just one individual, but they would unless they, they want to break up the tag team. The Wyatts are selected as individuals. I'm not sure why this was done, but hey, that's what happened. Uh, Sasha Banks went to Raw. Becky Lynch goes to SmackDown, and Chris Jericho goes to Raw. Now Raw starts to pick up experience later. Now with a guy like Chris Jericho, uh, Sasha Banks I think is star power. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Star Power Charisma Smackdown and I think Smackdown might be a great place for Bray we finally can put Bray in a title picture here uh, coming back on the rest of the show uh, Sasha Banks took, uh, takes on Brooke and Charlotte in a handicap match of course she can't beat two people at once but you know she tries right um Going forward, Rusev and Lana are our raw draft picks. Why are Rusev and Lana raw draft picks? Because hey, Rusev and Lana have the U.S. title. Raw wants the U.S. title, which is funny because last time the Brand City SmackDown had it. Uh, well, SmackDown said we can't be out without a title. We'll take the world champion. I mean, we'll take the IC champion. So they selected me as a Maurice. Because uh, you, your valet is going to come with you. So, uh, Miz and Maurice will be over on the other side. Uh, Kevin Owens is going to Raw. That is a big pick for Raw. I think uh, that would be him and Sami Zayn will continue their feud. That's also the thing, too. Just like some feuds are going to end, some stuff is going to continue. Uh, Jericho will be a part of that mix, I guess. Uh, Baron Corbin is going to SmackDown. Good look for him. Uh, Izzo and Cass are staying on Raw. So uh, I would expect a title push or something to come for those guys sometime soon. But uh, that's this is a pretty good show so far. Now, mind you, we only do 30 picks live on SmackDown. The rest of the picks are done afterwards on the WWE Network. Uh, I haven't even went through them yet. But I, you know, I know people like Titus O'Neil ended up on Raw, so he'll be with Derek Young on Raw. That'd be good. But uh, yeah. So we come back in the next round. The club Gallows and Anderson are on Raw, so that tells me they're going to be picked up. They're going to be paired up with Baylor. Uh, SmackDown with a hell of a pick drafts American Alpha. Bruh. American Alpha having them as a team I think would be very beneficial for SmackDown. New blood, new energy and those guys are so talented. This is Shelton Benjamin Charlie Haas 2.0 right? So plugging them in on SmackDown they're going to be young, they're going to be gutted, they're going to go after people. So it, it's we have to wait and see how that works out. But um Big Show goes back to Raw, which I think they'll use him on a limited basis. Dolph Ziggler goes to SmackDown. Thank God. Uh, 
his best career was on SmackDown. That's where he became world champ. Well, yeah, that's the Vicky Guerrero shenanigans. He his best bet is to be on SmackDown. Uh, Nia Jax is coming to Raw from NXT. She's gonna change the game. Oh, she's gonna change the game. Having somebody that fierce. It, it, it's, it's going to be something And She's hungry She's a legacy She has all the tools And she has look She has style I think everything works for her And her look is very unique And different from others So She'll be ready to go um, Jericho takes on Cesaro Jericho beats Cesaro uh, Becky Lynch attacks Daddy Um Really, you know, that's all we got. Because Daddy had a match with Alicia Fox, but Becky Lynch wanted to pay back. Then we get to the last part of the draft. Uh, Alberto, De- well, Neville is drafted by Raw. We haven't seen Neville in a while, so when he shows up on Raw, it'll be worth seeing. Daddy goes to SmackDown, so she'll probably continue her, her issue with Becky Lynch. So Zara will be at Raw. So I expect some things from him and Jericho to continue. Alberto Del Rio goes to SmackDown. A great place for him. I think Alberto will get more appreciated on SmackDown. Uh, away from the light, a lot of people are going to love it. Um, well, I would say. Um, and the last pick, Sheamus goes to Raw, which is kind of anticlimactic, but hey, somebody had to go somewhere, right? So, we have a world title match at the end of the show. Uh, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. Because we didn't get a clear winner Monday. And how does it work out? Dean beats Seth. Clean. It's over. He got it. He won that match. But Seth probably feels like he won Monday. And hey man, we got to sell this Sunday at the pay-per-view. So let's get to the pay-per-view. WWE Battleground. Plant your flags, plant your flags. This is the fourth installation of the WWE Battleground pay-per-view. Uh, you started in 2013 in Buffalo, where Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan fought for the vacant WWE title. Uh, we go to 2014, where uh, John Cena defends the WWE title in the Fatal 4-Way against Randall, Randy Orton, Kane, and Roman Reigns. Now, remember... When Daniel and Randy fought the year before, it was just a WWE title because the belts weren't unified. 2014, we unified the belts. Um, Daniel Bryan finally overcomes at WrestleMania, but then gets injured. Cena wins the title at Money in the Bank, and then he faces uh, the four guys in the Fatal 4-Way. And they all look good, but Cena comes out the winner. Then he goes to SummerSlam and gets killed by Brock. Brock carries that belt all the way to WrestleMania, where he loses it when Seth Rollins catches everybody in the bank. Fast forward to 2015, a few months after that, Rollins must defend his belt that he has against uh, Lesnar that he has ran away from. Uh, of course, Rollins maintains that belt and holds on to it until he gets injured in a later part of the year. Then Roman messes around to get the belt. And then after Roman gets the belt, then uh, Ambrose uh, beats Roman for the belt. And, of course, that's where we are now, where Dean Ambrose is taking on Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins in a triple threat match for the WWE title. Oh, I mentioned Dean Ambrose did cash in money in the bank to beat Roman Reigns. But neither here nor there is 2016, and we are ready for the battleground. Are you ready for the battleground? Um, pretty much... Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will probably be the kickoff match. Well, I don't know if the kickoff match. They'll be the first match in the actual pay-per-view. I don't think they make it to the kickoff show, right? So, uh, I'm going to go with Sami Zayn because everybody likes the underdog. And I think Sami Zayn has a good shot at winning this thing. And beating Kevin Owens. And then moving on. Hopefully. But then again who knows. This feud may continue for a while. Because people really like this match. It is one of the classic feuds. That has crossed territories. And has crossed over. And people have seen it in multiple promotions. And now it's being seen on the biggest stage possible. And I think people really dig that idea.
So now I guess I need to come up with a winner for this match. Uh, really, I'm gonna go with neither. I think Sammy and Kevin fight to a draw, and uh, maybe it goes time limit. Maybe it's double count out. Maybe they have double pin, and I think their issue gets solved at WrestleMania. That's where we'll f- not WrestleMania. I'm sorry, SummerSlam. SummerSlam was probably the best idea for them to to finally finish their thing, right? So let's go there. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Natalia in a one on one match. What of two women's matches that night? Uh, Natalia and Becky have had some issues. Uh, they've been attacking each other. This is going to be a feud that spills over to SmackDown and possibly crowns the women's champion over there on that brand. Because I'm assuming Raw will have its own women's champion with Charlotte. I'm going to go with. Um, I'm going with Natalia. I think the heel has to win. I think Becky Lynch has an uphill battle weight on her. Um, I think she's talented. I think she has all the, the tools where she should win. But I think this for this thing to go how it needs to go, I'm going to give it to Becky. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to give it to Natalia to figure out a way. Cause, like I said, she's a veteran. Things are happening in that ring where she will figure out a way to make it work for her. So, that's where I'm going to go with that match. John Cena, Enzo Cass versus the club. Who is and why? This one is easy. Um, the club is breaking up. So, they're not going to take a win when they're breaking up. Cena's going to SmackDown. Enzo and Cass are probably going to go to Raw. But, they don't have a long-term future together. They don't have anything that bonds them. So, for the purpose of this match, and because the WWE doesn't look at us, well, somebody needs a win. I'm going to say Enzo, Cass, and Cena defeat the club. Then, what happens after the match, who knows? Maybe AJ messes up and they turn on AJ. But it, it, it's going to dissolve that night, right? Because the club is on Raw, AJ's on SmackDown. AJ and Cena probably will continue to still have their thing. But Gallows and Anderson... We'll be moving on to other things. So the Heels are not going to win with this being the last hurrah for those guys being together. So I'm going to go with, like I said, Cena and his team taking a win in this match. Now we move on to the Intercontinental Championship match. Um, Miz takes on Darren Young for the IC title. Uh, Darren's been getting a good push. He has uh, won, won a battle royal to be the number one contender. Uh, he got a pitfall with old Alberto Del Rio on the, uh, the next SmackDown. Uh, him and uh, Zack Ryder got a win as a tag team. I'm going to go with Miz. Here's why. Uh, just kind of like how Becky Lynch, people have to climb. People have to claw. People have to get revenge. Right? Anyway, um, Miz will uh, eventually lose to Darren Young I think but right now Darren Young has to achieve a little more it'll be close it'll be controversial it might even come down to a dirty call and they'll rematch it on Raw but Miz will win Miz will walk away with the belt uh, Rusev defends the United States title against Zack Ryder I think the same thing I think this is not big enough of an event for Zack Ryder to take that belt I think Zack Ryder takes the U.S. title, but I think he takes it uh, at SummerSlam. I think he has a better chance of taking it at SummerSlam, at least. Um, the Wyatt family will take on the New Day. Um, this one, I will say, the Wyatts. Uh, the Wyatts need a win. I think they need a win as a collection. Uh, the titles are not on the line. And... Well, you know, it depends on how the show was paced, too. Because um, I just gave you three straight heels winning. And it probably won't go exactly like that. There has to be somebody buffering in between. Yeah, but the Wyatts need a win. I think they've been getting used and abused. And I think they a win against the tag team champs would do them a lot good. 
Uh, Sasha Banks and uh, uh, partners be announced will take on Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Now, this one the good guys are gonna win. What I bank it on is that Sasha's surprise partner is Bailey, and they will take on Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Beat Charlotte and Dana Brooke and move on. And that's what it is. And I'll be Bailey's welcome to the WW, uh, welcome to the main roster thing. But yeah, I'm going to say that that's where that's going to go. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to call it that Bailey is probably, this is the last four horsewoman. Um, and she's finally going to get her shot at the big time. Next match WWE Championship Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. <sighs> now, does Dean win the title and carry that over to SmackDown? Or does uh, Seth or Roman win keep it at Raw? Because eventually we got to crown another champion and set that up also. Right? Well, for those of us who stay in over, you know what I mean? Yeah, we got to find us a champion. Yeah, um, this is going to probably be a bet match, a very good match. Uh, I don't know what kind of ring rush Roman's going to have after being off for so long. Uh, I expect big things for everybody involved. Roman winning would send a bad message, so I'm going to leave him out as the winner. So it's going to come down to Seth and Dean, which is what they're doing all week. But, uh, you know, things happen. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's basically coming down to Dean or Seth. Because Seth could take the title and he could feud with Roman on Raw. Or Dean could take the title and we could start something fresh. And, you know, Raw will get its own world champion. Doesn't really matter. Sometimes soon. But, it's all, it's all good. Um... If I had to make a prediction, I say Seth Rollins wins the belt. I think Seth Rollins with the belt, the belt he never lost, going in onto SmackDown, I think makes several statements, right? But uh, yeah, let's see how it all works out. But yeah, my pick is Seth Rollins. I think Seth walks away with the title and forces SmackDown to create its own. Which they might have one in place, and Dean will have it and have to fight it off. So, with that being said, uh, I think we've done. There ain't nothing else really enough to talk about. Uh, we're going to enjoy this pay per view. It's going to be good. Uh, Battleground is one of the more significant ones because it's taking place after the draft. So, we very, we very well going to work it out. Kevin Owens, this Sunday at Elimination Chamber, you will be facing John Cena in what is being dubbed as a champion versus champion match. Uh, we've been able to see uh, what you've inflicted on Sami Zayn at NXT, uh, and you've claimed that that's not a personal matter, but now with John Cena, is this personal for you, between you and John? You know what, Renee? I think it might be personal. And it actually hadn't occurred to me until you just said it. See, because I came here and did what I did to John a few weeks ago on Raw because he was taking credit for Sami Zayn's injury when, as I've explained many times, that injury is mine. I I caused it. You were there, you remember. Right? But now that you put it this way, There's something deeper to it. See, because ever since I've gotten here in WWE, I've realized that everybody lives in John Cena land. From from the higher ups to the decision makers to, to, you know, the the crew that sets up the arena. And everybody in between. John Cena this, John Cena that. Well, you know, where I came from, there was no John Cena. Actually, where I came from, I was John Cena. I'm the one people looked up to. So, with that in mind, I can't, I literally physically can't come here and do like everybody else and 
praise John Cena and let him take credit for something I did. So this Sunday at Elimination Chamber, not only am I going to set the record straight, but I'm going to show the entire WWE Universe and you, because I want you to make, I want to make sure you see it too, that the real champ is... Come on. Here. Got it. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time.